In this video, we shall learn the chapter Structure of the Atmosphere. Well, the atmosphere consists of different layers with varying density and temperature. Density is highest near the surface of the earth and it decreases with increasing altitude. The column of atmosphere is divided into five different layers depending upon the temperature conditions. They are first one is troposphere which extends up to 8 that is 8 to 18 kilometers. Then it is stratosphere up to 50 kilometers. Then it is mesosphere. It extends from about 50 to 85 kilometers above our planet. Then comes the thermosphere that lies between 85 kilometers to 500 kilometers. Then comes the exosphere that lies between 500 to 10,000 kilometers. Talking about the first layer and that is troposphere. Troposphere is the lowest layer of Earth's atmosphere. Most of the mass that is about 75 to 80 percent of the atmosphere is in the troposphere. Most of the types of clouds are found in the troposphere and almost all weather occurs within this layer. The troposphere is by and far the wettest layer of the atmosphere and all the layers above contain very little moisture. The bottom of the troposphere is the earth's surface. The height of the top of the troposphere varies with latitude. Its average height is 13 kilometers and extends roughly to a height of 8 kilometers near the poles and about 18 kilometers at the equator. So what do we understand? It is lowest over the poles and highest at the equator. The thickness of the troposphere is greatest at the equator because heat is transported to great heights by strong convectional currents that is vertical currents here. The height also varies by season. It is lower in winter and higher in summer. It can be as high as 20 kilometers near the equator and as low as 7 kilometers over the pole in winters. Now this layer contains dust particles, water vapor, storm, clouds and rain. All changes in climate and weather takes place in this layer. The temperature in this layer decreases at the rate of 1 degree for every 165 meters of height. That is why the peaks of tall mountains can be snow covered even in the summertime. This is the most important layer of all biological activities. In this layer, the temperature decreases with height. The reason is the density of air decreases. It means the density of air is high near the ground and as we go to higher altitudes the density of air decreases. So there are less air particles and the heat absorbing capacity of the air decreases. And that is why when you go to higher altitudes it is cool and pleasant. The zone separating the troposphere from stratosphere is known as tropopause. The air temperature at the tropopause is about minus 80 degrees Celsius over the equator and about minus 45 degrees Celsius over the poles. The temperature here is nearly constant and hence it is called tropopause. Then comes the stratosphere. The stratosphere is found above the tropopause and extends up to a height of 50 kilometers. The bottom of the stratosphere is around 10 kilometers above the ground at mid latitude. The top of the stratosphere occurs at an altitude of 50 kilometers. The height of the bottom of the stratosphere varies with latitude and with the seasons. The lower boundary of the stratosphere can be as high as 20 kilometers near the equator and as low as 7 kilometers at the poles in winter.
the lower boundary of the stratosphere is called the tropopause the upper boundary is called stratopause one important feature of the stratosphere is that it contains the ozone layer it lies between altitude 20 to 50 kilometers it heats this layer as it absorbs energy from incoming ultraviolet radiation from the sun temperatures rise as one moves upward through the stratosphere temperature rises from minus 60 degree celsius at the base to 0 degree celsius at the stratopause this is exactly the opposite of the behavior in the troposphere in which we live where temperature drops with increasing altitude because of this temperature stratification that is because of this temperature layers there is little convection and mixing in the stratosphere so the layers of air there are quite stable commercial jet aircraft fly in the lower stratosphere this is to avoid turbulence which is very common in troposphere next comes mesosphere the mesosphere is a layer of earth's atmosphere it is directly above stratosphere and below thermosphere it extends from about 50 to 85 kilometers above our planet temperature decreases with height throughout the mesosphere the coldest temperatures in earth's atmosphere that is about minus 90 degree celsius are found near the top of this layer the boundary between the mesosphere and the thermosphere above it is called the mesopause at the bottom of the mesosphere is the stratopause that is the boundary between the mesosphere and the stratosphere below the mesosphere is difficult to study so less is known about this layer of atmosphere than other layers then comes the thermosphere the thermosphere is directly above the mesosphere and below the exosphere it extends from about 90 kilometers to between 500 to 1000 kilometers above our planet temperatures climb sharply in the lower thermosphere then level off and hold fairly steady with the increasing altitude above their height solar activity strongly influences temperature in the thermosphere the thermosphere is typically about 200 degrees celsius hotter in the daytime than at night and roughly 500 degrees celsius hotter when the sun is very active than at other times temperatures in the upper thermosphere can range from about 500 degree celsius to 2000 degree celsius or higher the boundary between the thermosphere and the exosphere above is called thermopause at the bottom of the thermosphere is the mesopause the boundary between the thermosphere and the mesosphere below then comes the exosphere the exosphere is the uppermost layer where the atmosphere thins out and merges with interplanetary space it lies between 500 to 10000 kilometers above the earth in this layer temperature increases with height the most common molecules within earth's exosphere are those of the lightest atmospheric gases hydrogen is present throughout the exosphere with some helium carbon dioxide and atomic oxygen near its base because it can be hard to define the boundary between the exosphere and outer space the exosphere may be considered a part of interplanetary or outer space it is located directly above the thermosphere very little is known about it due to lack of research the ionosphere is the ionized part of the earth's atmosphere the ionosphere is located between 60 and 1000 kilometers above the mesopause the ionosphere is not a distinct layer like others mentioned above instead the ionosphere is a series of regions in parts of the mesosphere 
and thermosphere where high energy radiations from the sun has knocked electrons loose from their parent atoms and molecules. The electrically charged atoms and molecules that are formed in this way are called ions. Giving the ionosphere its name and endowing this region with some special properties. It contains electrically charged particles known as ions and hence it is known as ionosphere. Radio waves transmitted from the earth are reflected back to the earth by this layer. It contains electrically charged ions which create a display of lights 400 kilometers. It is known as Aurora Borealis in the Northern Hemisphere and Aurora Australis in the Southern Hemisphere. Ions reflect radio waves back to the Earth's surface and this enables us to have wireless communication. The Earth is constantly bombarded with debris, radiation and other magnetic waves from space that could threaten the future of life as we know it. Most of the time, the planet's own magnetic field does an excellent job of deflecting these potentially harmful rays and particles including the one that is coming from the sun which is known as solar wind. The particles discharged from the sun travel 93 million miles towards the earth before they are drawn irresistibly towards the magnetic north and south poles. As the particles pass through the earth's magnetic shield, they mingle with atoms and molecules of oxygen, nitrogen and other elements and result in a dazzling display of lights in the sky.